Hello everyone and welcome to my mods I install on every new save game. So today we're going to break down an overview of the, the mods I install using a mod manager, STA mod folder. Now there is obviously plenty of mods out there and I can't include them all in this one video. These are more sort of quality of life and the ones I believe could have been in the base game from the beginning and they do enhance the gameplay quite a lot. Now I haven't included every single mod on my base folder because they are very simple to explain. So for example, we've got increased light range, which essentially, as it says in the tin, increases the light range of your vehicles. Fuel level warning sound, of course, very self-explanatory. And I've got three bushes and fences, three landscaping tools and paint and tail formula. So these more building mods are used for like no man's land. And of course I've got AI tire tracks, as it says in the tin, when the AI drives around, it leaves tire tracks so more authentic. And of course, if you're doing big maps like No Man's Land and you want to create big fields, some of the plows aren't the best or you're not very good at the ones with offsets, it's a very good mod to use quite large cultivators to plow in some fields or create fields at least. So very useful to have. Apart from that, I'm gonna dive into them a bit more in depth. There won't be full tutorials as I mentioned. So obviously we'll go in depth on some of them others it will just be a bit of an overview of how it works and how it can help you in your gameplay so do enjoy the video and i'll see you at the end okay at first we have the real mower mod so what this mod allows you to do is mow over the grass and it will move any bushes you have in place here so previously before the mod came out you'd mow over the grass which is either seeded in or the pasture grass which is on maps like no man's land would remain in place so it didn't look very good when you mowed over it so all you need to do now the only way you get rid of it is if you go on landscaping you have to go on plants and you have to put a meadow grass over it to remove it like so what this mod allows you to do is mow the grass and it will remove the plants as you go by so you just turn your mowers on hit f1 and you see in the top left screen there it says real mower off which means it's on so it's reverse Hit O, turn on. So I want to hit O again, turn it on. Drive forwards. And you'll see now the bushes are being removed. So nice and simple. And very useful, again, for maps like No Man's Land, Western Wilds, Calm Lands, where you want to try and maximise the profits with the pasture grass before you start building upon that land. There we have it. Wheel mower. Okay, next up we have better time scales. So again, very useful mod, nice and simple and to the point. So all you gotta do is you hit number eight and you can see in the top right hand screen there, the time has now gone from 0 0.5 to two. And it goes all the way up to maximum speed. And again, you can see it will progress through time very, very quickly. Hit seven and it will slow it right down to 0 0.5. So very useful when you're starting a fresh game, you wanna speed things up a little bit, get to the month you wanna start at. Or for example, you just wanna get a harvest going, it's raining. You can just skip ahead a few hours. So they've got up to 6 p.m. And there we go. Slow it right down again, and you're good to go for the evening work. So nice and simple. That's that's the time scales. Okay, next up we have easy development controls. So all you do is hit F12 and get the menu. Now the first thing to do if you're new to the mod, just go to the bottom here and you will see it's got all the information you need required to use this mod so it's all laid out for you which is very nice to have it built into the game you haven't got a few any uh, pdf files or xml files so it tells you about the play option and all the way down to the bottom environment so i'll very show you briefly again you've got money options flight mode very useful for getting cinematics and a hud visibility as well if you haven't got hard to save one you can just use it on the menu here play itself you can have running multipliers so you can go all the way up to you know 14 times and that one on and then off you go like superman you can fly around the map pretty quickly to get around very useful let's go back to where i started and then again hit f12 again and turn that one off jump multiplier if you're going to be superman you can jump four times as high up to 10 times third person view again it's okay i think the actual mod itself third person view mod is better there's a bit of blur but it's ideal for static screenshots if you want your character involved in there, so very you know, nice to have. Objects, okay, you can add in bells, you can add in round bells, square bells, 
the size and the type as well. So if you want to uh, quickly cheat or add some things in, building up a new farm, you want to add some decoration, off you go. So hit the tick button. There you go. Like magic. Logs as well. If you want some logs in there. There we go. One times log. Nice and cut. Nice and clean. Next down you have the vehicle section. So if I jump into a vehicle now, you can basically set the dirt level, the damage level and the fuel level. So again, if you're playing a role play series, you want to make sure the vehicle is looking a bit rusty, a bit worn down. You can do the option straight away. You haven't got to drive around countless hours to get it down to that, that state. Placeables, again, you can uh, set a few points here. Again, it's all in the description here. I won't go too much into this detail here because it's quite quite in-depth. Farmlands, I guess, is a very good one. So I use this quite a lot to set farms up. So set field fruit. Okay, I'm on. So I'm currently on, if I go back a second. Field 16, okay, I'm on. He's picking up. So you set your field fruit, and I want to so say I want barley in here 50% fertilization and greed's growing. Hit confirm. And now you go, because the field I just in is now turned into a field of barley which is growing. Let's say I want to progress that to sown to growing too, or ready to harvest, for example. Hit confirm. Give it a second soon, and then straight away you've got a field of barley right there for you. So nice and easy. And again, because I wasn't on a field, it's chosen every map in the every field in the map to go to barley because I didn't select the field itself. So be aware of that. Again, I've saved the game here, so it will be good. And then finally, you've got the weather option. So again, more for role play stuff. If you want to set the the scene, you want snow on for a long time, don't want it to clear away as you're playing along. You can hit. The type of year you can hit rain on and then all sorts of things there when we tire tracks you can just hit there and then just add snow if you want to add snow so plenty of options and again i won't go too deep into this menu because it's all in here for you so again so easy dev controls okay next up we have the follow me mod now as you can see here i've got a mower going and behind that is a tether now that is being utilized by hitting control f and it will allow the vehicle to behind to follow along. I can set an offset or control A and D, like the plows over there. So there's a plow at the front, and then there's an offset to the right. So it's very, very useful. You can get twice as much work done in one go. And it is just a touch of a button, control F, and you're on your way to go. Very simple to use, and I have used it in my Perbac Valley playthrough. So Go check out the video as well and you'll see an action doing some grass mowing so very simple to use that's follow me mod right next mod we have the crop growth stage information so as you can see on the bottom right of the screen there it says growth stage now we are currently at three or three and it's forage because it's grass which means we can now harvest onto this field here you can see it says it's growth stage one because it's been freshly seeded uh not so long ago and again the growth is now growing come over here to our field of canola and it says ready to harvest which basically means final growth stage is there and we can harvest this field now on to this one here you can see it says growth stage seven to seven but it's still growing on on the next stage it will be ready to harvest again i think we have one more over here we can show you and again oats ready to harvest so you get the point it pretty much gives you a description of what is ready. So we have the uh, sunflowers here, growth stage six. So you might think actually they look like they're growing quite well. If you're new to the game, you can actually tell they still need to go for another couple stages and they'll eventually die off in color. There we go. Nice and simple. And again, I use this one almost every time I play the game. So crop growth stage info on the mod hub. Next up, we have the lumberjack mod. Now very popular and I'm sure most people watching are very accustomed to this one. However, if you are new to Farming Simulator 22 and you want to get some forestry going or clear away an area to build your farm in and you're not very good at logging and like me, you're terrible with the machines, this is a good mod for you. So it basically allows you to cut down trees a lot faster. So it's twice the speed for chainsawing, three times increased chainsaw range and four times increased pickup range. 
It allows you to cut the trees anywhere on the map, even if, even if they don't own the land. And it also shows you the mass. Now I'll show you now how it works. So conventional method is you jump out here, you cut down your tree. You like your chainsaw. And away you go, nice and simple. And again, you then load the log up, you cut the branches off. Get yourself a stump grinder. So this one here, machine. Again, bit fiddly, quite expensive method of getting the stump removed here. So cost effective way of doing it. Activate the mod. So you can see now on the circle, it's vertical. Double tap the alt button and you can now see it's turned red. You hold your left mouse button down and voila, the tree and stump has vanished. Now again, if you are looking to make some money, then it's not the best way of doing it. But it's very useful if you're plowing in a field and there's a tree in the way and you want it gone without having to get all your equipment to get it out of the way. Nice and simple. Or let's say, for example, you cut the tree away and you're left with... Try and get this one cut. You're left with a stump in the field. So what we need to do, double tap the alt button and you can now pick up that, that branch you've cut away and right click the mouse button and you can throw it to one side and deal with it later. And again, benefit to this mod is it will move stumps as well. So same again, vertical, left mouse button and like magic, the stump is gone. So very useful to get things done nice and quick and get logging and treats out of the way. Also very useful for the super strength. Again, a lot of time you'll find a tractor will get stuck in a ditch, stuck on a uh, vehicle or a fence. You can just double tap the old button, pick it up, move out of the way, drop it down where you want it if you need to. Trust me, you'll use this a lot more than you think. There we have it, the lumberjack. Next up we have store deliveries. So a very good mod. Again, if you're starting a new farm up, you want to get kit and equipment up to your farm without having to drive back and forward, back and forward with trailers. This is the mod for you. So lift, left shift and alt, you will see a yellow circle appear. Hit the S button. And then voila, you hear a bit of a click sound. Now you go into your menu. Let's say I want a big truck here, big man truck delivered to me at the farm. Hit the OK button. And now here you go. A lovely new truck delivered straight to your doorstep. There is a delivery cost involved in this though, however. So I'll show you again if you missed it. So again, I'll get a tractor this time. Buy the tractor. And you can see delivery cost $3,000 or pounds, whatever you want to look at it. So there is a delivery cost involved. So be aware that it will cost more. Um, if you are setting up a farm, most likely you're using money cheats to get the money straight away. And then you'll set yourself up on that point. Just be aware. If you do want to build, for example, a silo here, not enough money. So what we'll do, we'll just add some money in. So again, the previous mod, good demonstration now. Let's add in some money. Back into our build mode. Got a silo. Shop area is restricted. So the map recognizes that the shop area has now moved to this area here. So be aware of that. If you go onto your map button here, you will see the symbol for the shop has also moved. The so store deliveries is there, the shop's still there. And then the store deliveries is placed here. To remove it, simply press left shift and alt and then push R. And now we're going to the map. You can see it's been removed. If I place it over here, left shift, alt and S. You can see now it's over here, the store deliveries. So just remember, if you're trying to build a new map up and you've got all your kit being delivered there, it will work as, as a shop area. So there we go, store delivery. So for those of you that like the visual effects on the game and you want to see more realism, this is probably a good mod for you. So it's called Dusty Lands Extension by FSG Modding. Now what this mod does, it increases the dust in the game. It applies to most of the tools, so plows, mowers, combines, Again, depending on what you're doing, the color of the dust will change. So the example I'm going to use now is the is the plowing. So you're going to see a lot of brown dust kick up. If we're mowing, it'll be a lot of green dust from the uh, pollen. So how it's going to work is you can see on the left hand side there, left shift, comma or space. It's currently set to three times. So I'll show you the most extreme case first. So we'll pull forward, and you can see a lot of dust is being kicked up, as you can see. Now. 
if I increase it down, so left shift to comma, we'll go halfway, 1.5. Mine's usually set to about 1.3. It's not as bad as you can see. If I lower it down now as I'm driving, you can see it decreases quite low. Or we can go again extreme up to times three. And again, this is affected by the last time it rained or snowed. So if it rained recently, the ground's going to be quite wet and there won't be as much dust. Same for snow. It also works for your vehicle wheels. So if I disconnect my plow and drive forward now. As you can see, there wasn't much dust at uh, three times because I'm on grass. If I now go on to the plowed area, you'll see straight away a lot more dust being kicked up. So it's a very nice touch and very good for visual effects. Um, one of my favorites so far in the last couple of months has come out. There we go, Dusty Lands by FSG. Next up, following on very closely from Dusty Lands extension is the exhaust extension. Now they are by different modders. Okay, FSG modding did not make this one, it's by Vectorman. So what this mod does, it basically adds smoke particles to exhaust systems of all vehicles. So it depends on the engine load and several trigger events, such as turning the engine on, declimbing or cutting a tree, and if the damage value is high of your vehicle. I'll give you a demonstration now. If I hit enter, you can see a bit of smoke comes out. If I drive forwards now, a bit of white smoke, as you can see, not too bad, which is as expected. Now, if I try and attach a plow, a very large plow, to this very small tractor, we'll see the effects of it, okay? So, we'll hook up here. And I'll show you now, just pulling it along as normal. As you can see, the smoke is a lot blacker and puffing out a lot faster. If I lower the plow now and try and pull along, you'll see there's a lot of engine load and it's pulling out a lot of smoke straight away. So it's a very nice touch, as you can see, and it works really well. If I just disconnect there, and what I'll do now is I'll hit the F12 menu, go to my vehicle settings, and we'll set the damage to 90%, but the words 90% as well. So because the damage is now very high, it's smoking constantly black, okay, because it needs repairing. So as I drive along, you can see it's puffing out a lot of black smoke. So the worst condition your tractor is in, the more smoke it's going to produce, which I think is a really nice touch. Again, especially if you're playing like a vintage style playthrough and using old tractors, you can set the damage quite high straight away and you get this nice visual effect of smoke coming out. So really nice mod, exhaust extension. Next up, we have Proceed by Wopster. Now, this is available on the Mod Hub for PC only and is a very good mod for visual effects and doing your fertilizing and your herbicide. So, as I said, it basically gives you a, a tram line in your fields. Now, I won't dive too, too deep into the menus because there was a lot to go through. Essentially, though, there was three menus, manual, semi-automatic, and auto. Now, auto does require a GPS mod, which I will go through shortly. If, like me, you play a lot of UK maps or European maps where the fields aren't big square fields, you've got one here with a mast in the middle, and it offsets the um, shape of the field, you're going to need to use manual mode. So how it works is you select your sprayer distance. So mine is 18 meter sprayer I've used for this example. And then, so it will do one track as a normal, a bit off. Number two, it will turn on the... tram line and then number three we'll turn on the tram line effect off so I'll give you an example here of what I've done I've come on the field I've got entrance and exit again this depends on how big your field is if there's a map like Perbeck Valley which I'm playing on now it will be a very narrow entrance way and a gate so I've come on the field I've done a headland so if you're in semi-automatic mode you'd have this section here would be a full pass through with no tram line. And then track number two is your tram line, which will cover this bit here and this bit here, and then your tram line's there. And then track number three will be a full one. So I've done a full headland around, and then I've set a course, so I go into the field, loop around, and I come back up. Now, 
this field here, as you can see, is not square, which is why you have to use manual mode. So here, you can see offsets the way the um, map goes in. So I've had to throw in a second track here. And then you loop around, come up this way here, and you go back down on yourself, all the way down, this way. And then back around the tracks you made previously, all the way up, and then you exit. So essentially, instead of going up and down, up and down, you just jump in the entrance and you follow the course you've set, and you come out and exit all the same way you came in. So it's nice and simple. So I'll show you now on the screen how it looks on the map, as you can see, the tram lines there, so my route, as I just explained, I'll come down a full headland, I'll come down through here, I'll loop back on myself, it's the left track, up, and then all the way down, and I'll come back up the way I came to spray it off and exit the map. Now I'll just quickly jump out of time and I'll show you how it looks with the crop growing. So here we go, now we're in March and the crop is ready for harvest. You can see the effect it has here, obviously it's not always perfect, but it is a good way of getting tram lines in visually and obviously for your spraying it makes sense. So I'll show you now how it works. So we'll jump in my tractor here and I'll turn on my sprayer. Now as I go around the field here it will go into the tracks and it will not destroy the crop in the middle. Whether you've got narrow tires on or off it will not destroy the crop okay. So the, the vehicle here okay it's nice and easy to get through and as you can see it's spraying the fields and you can also go around and fertilize or use herbicide to get rid of your weeds so a bit more realistic it looks really nice once you get going and you figure out a track and how to go through I'll just show you now if I jump into the John Deere here disconnect that one there you can see the proceed mod disappears now I've got wide tires on this tractor so if I drive through now it's going to destroy the crop if I go into my tram line, you'll see that it should keep most of the center line where it is and it won't destroy the crop around it, okay? You could use a large tractor with wide tires as long as you're quite precise and you keep within your tram lines. So, very nice mod to have, good visual aid and also makes sense to do your spraying. So there we go, proceed by Wopster. Next up, we have a, another Bopley mod by Wopster, which is GPS or Guidance Steering as it's known as. So again, I won't go into too much detail about how the controls work and so on because it will be a very long episode us or tutorial. All I do say though is make sure when you buy your vehicle is that you go down to GPS and enable it 15,000. Okay, it's not automatically added. So how it works is if I lower my harvester here and turn it on, now I'm just using keyboard and mouse currently. Normally use controller, okay. I can drive along and it'll be somewhat straight, okay. But you'll find doing it manually, there will be a lot of uh, deterioration. There won't be as straight as you want it to be. Especially with controllers or steering wheels, you can turn slightly and it's not perfect. And again, we've got Dusty Lands installed here. I believe it is at almost at maximum. So as you can see at times three now, very dusty indeed harvesting this um, field. We'll just knock it down to 1.5. So halfway. So as you can see, it's, a, it's an okay, it's a fairly straight line. But the problem is now, if I turn on auto cruise control, it will just keep going. Now there was an option to turn on headland management, so it will detect the end of a row and it will stop the vehicle for you. So if you've got cruise control on, it won't go off by itself. Now if I just lift up my harvester here, I'll show you, it's not a bad line I've done there, okay? But again, if you've got steering wheels involved, sometimes you do mess up a little bit. And it's, it's much better for plowing and fields as well, you know, just sit back and relax. So I'm gonna activate the mod now. And as you can see, the lines have appeared and it will, it will lock onto that line, like so. And I can just try forwards. it does the work for me. If I turn on cruise control, I can let the hands go now and not do anything and it's doing all the work for me. Nice and easy and you get one big straight line on 
guidance doing. As you can see as well, if I just bring up my menu here, it shows you the track you're in. So currently we're minus one because we've gone to the opposite direction of the track we did initially. If this was the first track, it would be zero or one, two, three, and so on. So it lets you know when you're doing your next line. Again, it's very good for doing mods like Proceed if you're doing straight lines or doing your automatic Proceed mod. So very useful mod to have if you've got a very large fields and you're using multiplayer and you don't want to mess up the lines and the rows with everyone else, you can just set it on, cruise control on, and you can sit back, have a chat, and off you go. So very useful mod, GPS by Wobster. So next up we have the Real Dirt Color, Real Dirt Particles, Real Dirt Tracks, and there was also a Fix mod released for these mods. Now they don't come as a package, you need to download them individually. So how it works is as you can see here, there is mud on the tires. That is because I've just driven along this freshly ploughed ground texture here and you can see the transition of mud there. So if I jump in the tractor now, you see the back of the wheels as I pull forward is particles flicking up. Now that's the particle effect taking place on the mod, which is a nice transition. Now if I turn to the right here, you'll see the tracks follow from the texture of the mud and it will transition onto this lime here. And then I'll pick up the lime on the wheels and then the tracks will go into lime. So we have a look quickly. So there's the mud. And then as you can see, it transitions slowly over to the lime and then the wheels will now change color based on the texture you're driving on, which in this case is the lime. It applies as well to snow, grass, and slurry and manure as well. So you get a different texture for each ground texture you place down. So it's another nice visual mod, adds a bit more realism to the game. And as you can see now, almost quite quickly, the wheels have gone quite white like the tractor here. So it adds a nice effect. And again, if I go from white now to soil, you'll see a transition of lime and it'll gradually transition across over to the, the new mud texture. And the wheels are now starting to pick up mud. So if I keep driving now, the lime will get removed and the mud texture will take effect. And I believe as well, if it's raining, this takes effect a lot faster. So now you can see the particles have changed and the mud is now picking up on the tires once more. So a very nice visual mod to add and I recommend you have this one and all four mods it comes as. So there we go, real dirt color. Next up we have course play by the course play dev team. Now I've had a worker going here on this field and as you can see it's doing okay but it is missing a few bits, it's missed a couple of rows. So this mod is basically a better way of using AI workers and it allows you to program them exactly how you want. You'd have multiple tools going at one time and it is a very simple to use. So this isn't a full tutorial, but I'll quickly briefly explain how it works. So you hit the escape button, you go to your menu and you create a job as you would do the AI workers. Now up here you have a course play field work option. So it automatically detects the field you're in and there's options as well to do custom fields if you plow the fields in yourself. Open up your course generator. It should auto detect the width of your implement for this vehicle here, the Massey Ferguson. And say I want to have two or three headlands, we'll go for two. And I want to start working on the headlands first. Up and down rows I want, or a spiral, but usually have up and downs. You then generate a field course. And as you can see behind, it's got a start point and end point. So it will now work in nice neat rows up and down the field until the end point. You didn't hit back and then start the job. Come out of it. And now the worker is gonna go and do the course I've just programmed. Again, you can change this as much as you want. You can have multiple headlands, you can have multiple tools, you can have multiple vehicles on the field at one time. So it's very simple, very nice to use. And there are more options in there. You can save tracks, you can save courses for certain fields. You can adjust the wages, fuel, gamepad friendly, and a few other options in there. So again, very good mod to use, and I'll do a more in-depth tutorial in the future. But for now, that is course play. And finally, we have a building mod, which isn't well known as much as it should be. It hasn't got many reviews on the mod hub, but it's a very useful mod to have for all you builders out there that enjoy doing your own farm builds. So how it works is, like so. We're going to place down a shed here. Go for the old farm barn here. And I want to place these 
next to each other in an equal amount. So let's go here. And then I want to go roughly, you know, five or six meters away. About there. And then I want to have another one the same distance away. So I'm going to try and guess as best as I can. About there. Now the problem is, as you can see, they aren't quite aligned at all. So they're not lined at the back. And they're not lined at the front. They also aren't the same distance apart. So how does mod works. If you haven't played The Sims, think of like the grid building option. So now we'll go back into the sheds here. Hit the F1 button and you can see there. I've got snap build position zero and rotation. So this allows me to do is place it at certain angles. But just be aware when you anytime you change the Alt 5, Alt 6 option, you need to re-click back on the one you want to do. You haven't got to go to this one and that one, just double click or click once there. And it will reset the menu you've just done. So for example, I want to have the build at 90 degrees. So if I right click now and turn, again it hasn't taken effect there because I haven't clicked here. But now it's 90 degrees. So you know it's going to be exactly 90 degrees straight. I'm going to place it down here and I also want to have it 5 meters away. So if I go Alt 5, up to 5 and again click here to initiate that option. And then when I place the, the barn here, it's going to snap on at five away. So I won't do it here because it's too close. And I'll come across one more time and you can see now it's gone five away. Come again, move the mouse across one more time. Exactly five away, exactly 90 degrees. So if I come here now, you will see they're all in one nice neat line. All the way along at 90 degrees. So very useful if you want to place down silos, barns in a nice square form of formation. So I'll give you one more example just here. Let's go for a silo and I have, let's go for this one here. I want these now in nice neat rows. So again, it's 90 degree turn, but let's say I want them at a 45 degree turn and I want them two meters apart. So I go Alt 5 to 2, click here so it resets it and now as I rotate it's now 45 degree rotations. So if I go here and I click, go across, it's now 2 meters apart. But what we have here is overlaps of another object. So another mod I recommend is to have place anywhere. So if I hit V now, it will allow me to place. So now I'll go back to where I was and it will snap to 2. And they're all exactly 45 degrees at 2 meters apart. Let's say I want to have a bigger one here and I want them to be a bit more spaced apart. So Alt 5 will go 3 meters apart at a 6 degree rotation. Reset your options and now it's a 60 degree rotation at 3 meters apart. So if I place here, I want to add a bit of diagonal this time. So it's 6 degrees away at diagonal just there. Again, it does snap and I want another one just here, there, and there. You'll see they're all placed at 60 degree angles and they're all placed exactly 3 meters apart. So it looks nice and neat and nice and square as opposed to my placing here. You can see they aren't all aligned, it's very fiddly. So this is a really great mod for building if you want to have nice and neat farms and items placed at 90 degrees 60 degrees, 45 or 30 degrees. So check it out and try and learn it as best you can. I do recommend this one for anyone that does do their own farm builds, especially like No Man's Land and Western Wilds. So we have it, snap build. So there we have it. That is the mods I install and recommend you install on every playthrough on FS22. And of course, I do recommend you also get a mod manager. There's plenty out there. I use the SGA mod manager. I did mention at the start as well, I do have precision farming installed as my base package as well. And again, it's from Giant Software, but it does require a lot of in-depth uh, videos and explanations. So I didn't include that in the video section today, but it is a very useful mod. Again, plenty of other YouTubers out there have done tutorials, so go check those out. And again, in the future, I will 
aim to do more in-depth videos, so course play, auto drive. We've got GPS and proceed. I would definitely look at doing more in-depth videos on those. So feel free to comment in below any ones that you reckon I should include or you include in your mod list. And I will see if I can get those in there and review them in the future. Thanks for your time. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, do please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.